Hi. So the goal is to be able to draw the motion graphs for you know some activity. Uh, so let's say we're riding a bicycle and we want to draw the displacement versus time, the velocity versus time, and the acceleration versus time. So you know about riding a bicycle. Let's say you start at some point and then you get going faster and faster, you accelerate, and then you move along at a constant speed for a while. All right, so we know at the very beginning we're not moving. V naught at t equals zero is zero. But I get going faster and faster. And so the graph might look like this. Over time, my velocity increases. So let's say over four seconds, I get up to 10 meters per second. Is that reasonable? Uh, 10 meters per second is about 20 mile, 22 miles an hour um, in four seconds. Let's say I get on my bike, go one, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, I, I think I could do that. Um, and then after four seconds, I continue along at this speed. And so this would be flat because I continue along over time at 10 meters per second. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is stop the video and draw the acceleration graph. Just a warning, these graphs, doing this, it seems really easy and then we wind up making mistakes. So it's really important that you take a moment and say, all right, I'm going to draw this acceleration graph. So stop the video, draw the acceleration graph, and let's see what you get. All right, so what we remember is acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity. And these are vectors. So if the velocity isn't changing, like right here, the change is zero. Right, there's no acceleration after four seconds, so I can draw after four seconds, this is flat, okay? But here, I have acceleration. I'm increasing my velocity. How fast? Well, over four seconds, I increase my velocity from zero to 10, that's 10 meters per second. We divide that up, that's I increase my speed 2.5 meters per second every second. So 2.5 meters per second per second, or 2.5 meters per second squared is the acceleration during this time. And does my acceleration change? Well, the slope of this line, the acceleration, the acceleration is the slope of the velocity, right? Because dv dt is change in y over change in x. So the slope of this line is it's pretty straight, so that slope is constant. And so this would be a straight drop-off. And maybe in reality, I would make this smoother transition, and then my acceleration would drop off in a smoother fashion. Meters. Meters per second squared. Okay? All right, so can you stop the video now and try to make me a displacement versus time graph? All right, so how does displacement relate to velocity? We can draw the same equation that velocity, that velocity is equal to the rate of change of displacement. Right, how fast I'm moving is how fast my position is changing, right? So that means this graph is the slope of that graph. So we know here the slope is zero because my velocity is zero. That's right, my displacement isn't changing. But where am I? Uh, let's just pick a point to start and say, I'm here, let's say at minus 10 meters, okay? Now what does the graph look like? Just like this? No, no, wait, because if it had a slope, that would mean I have velocity. 
So I have no velocity at the beginning. I know I'm not moving. After a little bit of time, I'm still in the same place. But as time moves on, I get going faster and faster, meaning this slope increases. I'm moving at a higher rate. And so this is going to look like this. And that slope will continue to increase until when? Oh, right here. Here, I'm moving at a constant 10 meters per second. And that means after four seconds, this, my displacement is going to be increasing at a constant rate. Let's just go back and check. Ah, constant slope, constant velocity. Here, slope is increasing in time because the velocity is increasing in time. Now, let's see if my y-intercept and everything is correct. How far should I go in four seconds? Should I go about, let's see, minus 10 to 15 meters? Let's find out. Uh, because, how do we do this? Ah, the change in displacement is then equal to velocity times change in time, right? And this, the velocity times the change in time, is just the area under that graph. So in four seconds, boom, 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 boom. Um, I want to find the area of that triangle. Well, that's just one half base times height. So the displacement, the initial change in displacement for four seconds is just one half four seconds times that 10 meters per second. And I end up with 20 meters. So I've moved 20 meters in four seconds, meaning I should have gone from minus 10 meters to positive 10 meters. Not bad, not bad. All right, so why don't you test yourself? Because you might be tested tomorrow, okay? Um, let's say we ride along for three more seconds. So now I'm at seven seconds. And then in two seconds, I come to a stop. Right? I see a car, and I come to a stop with constant acceleration. Okay? Can you draw, can you extend these graphs all the way up to where I stop? Again, what does that look like? I start, I'm accelerating, I get up to a constant speed, I stop. See you tomorrow.